This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Oluwa Oshuke and Nimi Dekombi. Hey, guys. Good morning. If you reside in Lagos, Nigeria, then it's no longer news that the Lagos State Government has banned the use of Okada and tricycles, popularly known as Keke, on major roads. Following the ban, which took effect on the 1st of February 2020, Nollywood actress and producer Uche Jumbo says, why do we have inconsiderate leaders? She's asking a series of questions, but I think that's the major part of her tweets. Why do we have inconsiderate leaders? Do you think our leaders are inconsiderate? Um, I would say they have been inconsiderate according to this ban, because um, if you're going to do something as um, radical as this, as banning Okada's um, Kekena Peps, which are tricycles and motorcycles, right? Um, I think there should be an alternative in place for people to... Um, now, we started seeing funny things and people think it's actually funny but it's not funny it's just what we've been reduced to people getting on horses to get to their destination people getting on bicycles Is to get really to true? no it's true oh. i i saw one today i don't know if but at least i saw no not even one i saw two i saw a girl dressed nicely on her horse <laughs> do you understand and i saw another guy in suits on a horse Wow. But I don't know if that's within the Oniru access mm -hmm. because obviously they're accessible to stuff like that. So um, I don't know if that's just the reason why that is happening around there. I don't know if that is how it's going to be yeah, everywhere in Lagos. I saw a blog um, just before I went to life now and um, <laughs> it was a series of horses. Let me not say plenty. It was like people were on leads and they're saying that's now. But I, f I, 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 I don't know what... The Lagos State Government hopes to achieve with this. They want a mega city, a same city, but um, things don't just happen. I have a feeling this the is still a purpose. Lot of people have been asking the people in government is what was the or what is supposed to be the alternative, and they keep saying we are working on the alternatives, and that is why I have a problem. I'm not saying don't ban Okada if that's what you think is best, fine. But what? did you expect what was the alternative to fill this gap mm. that is apparently open in the transportation system mm. in fact having keke and um okada was not even filling the gap completely now it's like a lacoon and you're saying they are coming we are launching 65 buses <laughs> and mm -hmm. do you know how many do you know how many Okadas, you took off the road mm -hmm. for you to replace them with 65 and you say and even those buses are not going to go to yeah, certain to areas certain areas that mm. Okadas can get to mm -hmm. I think for me I'll first of all say that kudos to Chijon because she's the only celebrity we have spoken out publicly. Spoken about yeah, I mean, I was it's thinking about like, it yesterday, and I'm saying so because it doesn't concern it's, it's you. Like because people. it doesn't concern them. There's, there's nothing. And it's again, not I, I, would, I would say that um, what she said and what the government has done is just a hint at the fact that the people who are in power don't really care about the average Nigerian. Because when you are setting rules or you are setting laws or whatever it is that you are doing, it should be for the people. Mm -hmm. It should not be because oh, we want Lagos to be a mega city. It should be, okay, we are creating um, a plan that mm -hmm. can serve the people. Let's listen to what the people want. There was none of that. You I, just do, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think it's a case of them not... Um, thinking of the average people, I think it's, it's it boils down to incompetence. Because now, some of the arguments that um, the troubles the Okada and the Keke um, people have caused, when you go to people, places like Ibobi and hospitals, the statistics are there, like mm. it is massive. Like people have lost their limbs, their legs, and all that due to the recklessness of these drivers, right? We understand that you want to keep us safe, you want to keep us alive. But the level of negotiation and conversation that went into this, I think it happened within a group of incompetent people because if you're competent, mm. then you need to have done the legwork. Don't just sit in your office. Mm. Do the leg legwork. Understand the areas that have these issues. The a because there are areas that you've taken keke and bike away, and there's absolutely no means no of transportation. Means of transportation. You need to walk. No no and how many people can walk? Areas. You know, so it's you can't force a certain lifestyle on people. And some people are saying, oh, it's now good. Negotiations will exercise. Mm. Sorry, it is not. Your 
your place to tell us how to exercise or when to exercise. I know exercises are good, but I don't want to exercise when I'm all made up and going to work. If I want to take a walk, I know when to wake up mm. and take a long walk, not when I'm going to work. But I think, I think people should done. also get educated on um, these bands because um, there are certain areas that the circadians have been banned, but yeah. because of um, the law enforcement agencies we have, and like, they don't even regard that. Mm -hmm. Even in an area where it's not affected by yeah. this ban, you still see people seizing or impounding yes. Okadas and okay. Kekes yeah. because they're trying to make money. Even though they know that, okay, you, you have the legitimate right to be on this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also saw a video of them trying to impound a, a delivery, delivery bike, bike, which is absolutely wrong because the delivery bikes are not affected by, by this. And um, I saw a tweet from the special, I'm, I think they call them SSA, I don't know if they're advisors mm -hmm. or whatever, Mm. or to the governor on media he was saying that um, they should reach out to them if anybody tries to impound a the delivery bike because it is not part of I think of we're just the, saying behind the scene that you imagine know. if this happens and then you can't get your deliveries mm -hmm. to you yeah. like mm -hmm. what are you going to do so everybody will have to drive down to yeah. these places where you so, order online to go yeah. and pick up your yeah. stuff you also mentioned something very important the law enforcement and people we know how irrational they can be mm. and how they take things out of control I mean even a street that is not part of this band they just go into it because they feel like if they pick one or two yeah. bands, they'll be able to get some money from it you know yeah. the corruption is deep in that side of the economy mm -hmm. and i just hope that they can really come back to the table because i think conversations yeah. need to go back into what they have done we also see protests from um the um what do they call them now Go Kada Max mm. NG yeah. and all yeah. that. They organize. Okay. They're actually people, affected you know? by this you because I feel like those people are even more regulated. They have I safety, see them wait for you know, they have all the traffic lights. I see like they don't just. They've been following I see them the ensuring you have your helmet. And at yes. some point, they said they follow the safety They said the law was 2000. What's the bike specification called? Something 2000 DS mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And that is about 2200. Mm -hmm. So why can't they be allowed Continue. once they are regulated and can assure you that they won't go beyond yeah. a certain rule? You know, or initially, I thought it was a business strategy for this. Um, online mm -hmm. bike um mm -hmm. what's it called now services. Biking services yeah so i was thinking okay it was a strategy to get more people on those um applications so that you request your bikes and mm -hmm. then they make more money and i was thinking okay it's one of those things that the government the corruption do you understand yeah. the corruption in the country but when i now realized they banned them i was like so what exactly is going on because we've seen a lot of people Complaining people they call them rants, but they're not rants. It's just your pain. It's who, who is wearing the shoe I that saw will know where she was bike. making 20,000 naira daily from driving. I think she was on the GoCada platform mm. and she used that to see herself through school, ND mm. in school. Mm. And now she's on IT and she's supposed to go back for her HND and she mm. doesn't, she you know, it, know it's it's, it's a sorry case. It's and already, I just hope it's, conversation It's already resumes. bad enough that the people that ride these Okadas and Kekena Peps are uneducated and desperate to make money. Not all of them are uneducated. No, okay, no, okay let me be fair and say not all of them, but yes. majority are uneducated and desperate people. Yeah. Now, I, 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 it's not right to generalize that but I'm saying this because um what would actually push a person to be riding Okata or Ikekena Pep is unemployment especially survival. for those that are educated and survival do you understand so by the time you take their source of livelihood some of them live in the ghetto where they've avoided peer pressure they've avoided crime by having a daily source of income mm -hmm. now do you want these people to now fall back to those because according they to said, the Lagos state government they said they want them to learn more skills bricklaying plumbing all those kind of skills that that's the reason why no, they, they said they realize that most of our youths instead of taking to learning those kind of skills they are now like doing Okada and Kekena. And then so they should get on the bus conductors to too then. But I just feel like, <laughs> while I feel like the Lagos State Government might have good intentions, whatever it is that they have done, they did not they, they did not do it, it proper. Yes, they did not think it through. And what it's they have done, being incompetent. what they have yeah. done is to just it's leave a lot of Nigerians if we continue, at the mercy of... Going to stop. Yeah. I yeah. just hope that they come back to the table and discuss and um, understand what they are doing, because I feel like they don't understand the gravity of what it is causing. Yeah.
Anyway, moving on to the next story. A recent report published by the New York Times suggests supermodel Bella Hadid was among the victims of sexual harassment by Victoria's Secret executives. The report alleged that models and staff were suffering backstage due to misogyny, um, bullying, and harassment culture in the popular lingerie company and fashion show Juggernaut. It also detailed the alleged sexual misconduct by the former chief marketing officer Ed Razek, who reportedly made lewd comments about Hadith's breast prior to the brand's annual televised fashion show in 2018. Following the report, Razek has released a statement denying all allegations and um, neither Bella nor Victoria's Secret has commented on the report. This just um, gives me the impression that there's certain people you don't mess with, especially in America, because um, Ed Razak was trying to, um, he dropped a very insensitive comment mm -hmm. while he was promoting the brand, saying that um, you can have plus, talking about plus, plus size. Yeah, yeah, he lost his job following them. that, actually. Yeah, I think he stepped down, but yeah, he lost his job, we mm -hmm. can put it that way. And um, Aside that, said that they don't even have plans of transgender and they're not selling to the whole world. You get yeah. so I feel like there are certain people in America that you can't mess with because when you make certain comments, you have to be very careful with, as an executive in any mm -hmm. sector. And it's just crazy that if they want you down, they will definitely get you down. They will dig up stuff. <laughs> now, there's this, this being an ongoing case where a lot of people have reported um, misconduct against Ed Razek and even. The billionaire of the mother company L something. Um, what's what's the company again? Something L. That that's the mother company of Victoria's Secret. They've leveled allegations against them about their misconduct and um, treating women wrongly, mm -hmm, the misogynist yeah. act and all of that. But at the end of the day, this guy kept walking impunitively, like nobody gave a hoot about what he was mm -hmm. doing. Do you understand? But all of a sudden, when you make comments, people will definitely, especially in the Me Too movement <sighs> era, and I think that you just need to be careful as an executive in any sector. Well, maybe or, I feel like you need to behave properly. Exactly. So even if you make a statement against a certain group, dirt, yeah. if there is no skeleton in your cupboard, anybody digging will not find anything to dig out. So mm -hmm. if that's the case, well, all well and good. But if he did this, then I hope he pays for what he has done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, Victoria's Secret is one of the like, biggest fashion mm -hmm. companies. If you want to talk about, you know, fashion laundry, shows, yeah. mm -hmm. laundry and all of that, Victoria's Secret is like the and biggest they've not had their annual fashion show in two years. They've not had their annual fashion show in two years because of the fact that they have stalled when it comes to inclusivity, body mm -hmm. positivity. I mean, one thing that um, Victoria's Secret failed to acknowledge is the fact that times change, mm -hmm. trends change. Victoria's people Secret change. was, yeah, people change. Victoria's Secret was like the hallmark the late, of beauty and then you see all of these thin models in beautiful, they call sexy. Them angel, like yeah, you know, they call them angels and then, but the trend changed. People were now moving towards more body positive brands like Savage and Fenty now. If you Included. saw the um, Rihanna's um, fashion show, there was so much diversity. diversity there yeah. were big models, there were black models, were dark skinned models. models, you know, it was a celebration of what it means to be a woman. Mm. When it comes to Victoria's Secret, it's like there's this image mm -hmm. that they already have of who a woman should be. So am I surprised? And they were trying to impose that, and they were trying to impose that on everybody. Am I surprised that there's misogyny or sexual harassment in, <laughs> in Victoria's Secret? No, I am not. Because when you look at the message mm -hmm. that they even put out with their branding, with the, the, the models that they put out there, you know that they're already telling us a message. There were so many women who grew up, they could not see themselves in the models that were parading the floor. Now you see other brands saying that, irrespective of your shape, irrespective of your size, we you matter. You. Mm -hmm. you know, we have something for you. We have a brand for you. And for so long, people were calling out Victoria's Secret to do a line for plus-sized people. No, people are walking into your store, they're like, this is not my size, this is not my size. They are feeling depressed because they feel like, oh, they cannot be sexy. Mm -hmm. Now, other brands are now saying, okay, we can include, we can create um, products for you, but you, you are still stuck in your, oh, this is the setting, um, this is the standard for what women beauty But then what, be. what he said, so is, it, is it, ex okay, you're not surprised. I'm not surprised about the misogynity. Mm -hmm. Him mm -hmm. saying they have their target audience and uh, all that. That's why I said they did not progress. Their target audience, this mm -hmm. is statement, target audience. If he said it in 2000, nobody would really say anything. But times have changed. In the era of Me Too, in the era of the Me Too, and everybody, um, you know, clamoring for but a voice know, and representation, things have changed. That, look, 
cool. Every 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 business has a target audience. Yeah. You have the people that you have in mind to sell to. So the only thing is, you I see now, every, everybody and everyone, like every are so sex, sensitive. So, like the sensitivity yeah, is scary. Yeah. So that's why I said you need to be careful what, what you say. Because even if you think age. it, you can't say it anymore. Yeah. So maybe he should have said that in a better way. But I still don't want to believe well, that this is the reason this plans, is happening now. Even, yeah. But I think I still don't and, want to and, and also, it's not just the reason. The, it's they have so many issues in Nigeria because there's, they were also accused of starving their models. They, the so extreme, they had so many issues. Okay, I thought you said they had so many secrets in Victoria's Secret. No, <laughs> no, I said they have so many issues because there were even, you know, there were tales of models who had to go through extreme measures in order mm. to keep their petite shape because if you go out of shape, mm. they'll be like, you can no longer, um, you know, walk the runway. So I don't think it's more or less like, okay, we cater to only thin people. It's more or less like the pressure that we're putting on, on the, models the models and even, like. you know, I wish we had time for you like. to explain this the way you feel, but I think it's your personal bias, though. It's time for a quick break. When we come back, we have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. Like God DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. What you saw today is a result of deep forgiveness. This is coming from Ubi Franklin um, after meeting his fourth child for the first time. So um, I'm low-key happy for them. Yeah. And I like that there is peace because there's a child involved. Mm. But the question now is who is forgiving who exactly? Mm. I think um, Sandra is the one who is forgiving Ubi. Why? Because... When Sandra came out to say that Ubi was the father of her baby, and he denied. Ubi was owing, and Ubi was owing her money. He denied million, everything. Yeah. Four million, eight million. Eight million, eight million. Okay. Mm -hmm. He denied everything. He even went, he posted one Instagram post and he was saying, silence, should my silence should not be. He, there was a lot of dragging. They dragged mm -hmm. each other. It was very, very messy. Mm -hmm. And then now, after two years, you're not coming to say. It's up two years. I think it was 2018 mm, that it happened. It's not, it's not, it's not two years, years, last year. This is last year. Yeah. yeah. It's so still now, fresh because I have to I have a gist about it. <laughs> now, in 2020, you are now. This is, I think this is the first time he's claiming that mm. the child. This is him. Basically. Yeah, this is the first time he's claiming responsibility. And I feel like, okay, whatever it was that happened between Sandra and Ubi, we don't really know how deep it is. Mm. But this is a child that is involved. I don't think he's just knowing now that he's the one who is responsible. For this job, but he denied her. He okay, said so that's that, the reason you think she's. That's why I feel right, like so that's what I think he did. Mm. I feel like no, he committed a very grave you. crime. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> let, me, no, yes. let me tell you why is the one we saying because before I was not sure. Okay. Mm. But now I think I'm very sure after reading this post again. He said, "But never forget, though." Mm. So will it be advising a woman that forgave him that she should never forget? Mm. So you understand? He's so he's saying that he's the one forgiving, but never forget. Like, mm. I remember everything you've done to me or everything you did what to did me. What did she do to him? Come, look, Obi, Obi is... He owed her money. He owed... Uh, do you, wait, it's one and side, did not it's pay. a one-sided story. If we recall, Obi never responded no, he, to any yeah, of these things. So it's a one-sided story. So what if there was actually an agreement and there was a payback date, but because of the... I'm not saying that... Sandra, you cannot wait, 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 I'm just... No, I'm giving... This is speculation. A no, it's not a speculation. I'm not speculating. I'm All only right. giving a scenario okay. that, okay, imagine she's actually the bitter one, okay, because you're not saying you want the child, then you're not saying, okay, I want my money, even though 
do I told you I'll pay you back in 10 years? Do you understand? You're not saying, okay, since you don't want the child, I need the money to take care of my child. Give me my money back. It's just a scenario. I'm not saying this is exactly what happened. But I feel like Ubi is the one saying that, look, I forget. And from both hands, yeah, it's only fair to say that, okay, maybe they're both forgiving. Yeah, I think they both need other. to forgive each other and move yeah, on. And move and on for the sake of the child, yeah, especially when exactly, the life is involved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The so, child is my own um, focus now because this child is most likely going to grow up and, and maybe this would resurface again. I should mm -hmm. remember that once upon a time, because of daddy and mommy were fighting, daddy denied me and said I was not his child. So I feel mm -hmm. like the forgiveness but then part the child also, is not even up to a year. Yeah, the child situation. is still young. Yeah. So, so I'm just so saying, like in the future, deep, really. it is possible. <laughs> it's not that deep. I think, I think, I think, I think um, it's only right for both of them to forgive each other at yeah. least yeah. for co-parenting's mm -hmm. sake and life is involved. Mm -hmm. But a big shout out to Ubi, father of all nations. This is the fourth As one, mm -hmm. you know. Rumor has it that mm -hmm. there's a fifth one coming, and we never know. Six. I, I, I don't know. I, don't I think know he said how, he's going to stop at five. I don't know how peaceful he has a goal. his house is. I don't know how peaceful his life yeah. is. But because he's I'm, still married to Lillian. No. How? No, didn't you see that the court said that they should settle their issues? They are oh, separated, the but paper, they are still married. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's not like they yeah, live yeah. together. Mm -hmm. not like, of course so not. I think Ubi is a free bird. He's just living his mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. one day at a time, how it comes, if he feels like. And I think he has set a goal for himself that he's going to stop after child number five. Yeah, so. Hopefully he will not deny this one too. Even if he does, he has reached his Go. his mark. <laughs> like well, I, want five I don't kids know what his plan is or what the bigger picture is for him in future, but I hope that he finds peace somehow because these women, fine, nobody's saying get married to them, but they will also get their own family and move on yeah. at some point, you know. And I I don't know what like I, I don't know what the, I think I just leave it. I don't know what his big picture is, mm -hmm. and I hope um, he finds peace somehow because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, but this is not the life, no. Mm -mm. Anyway, good luck to him. And I think that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can watch this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel and subscribing at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Alto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my co-anchors, Nimi Dekombi and Ife Oluwa Shunkaye and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us.